dual socket x99 pcs do they make sense in 2023 or are they going to be regulated to the past well let's find out and see five pros and cons of building one today so i'm going to go through the positives first because there's so many youtubers out there that tell you that dual socket pcs suck they're not worth doing or building in 2023 and you may as well go for a ryzen or intel chip that will run at far higher clock speeds more efficiently and also you will tend to get more cores depending if you're using a xeon chip or not on the x99 platform so let's move on to the first positive first off the bat x99 platform is highly customizable you could put all sorts of cpus into this motherboard or this platform and x99 has so many good cpus available on offer just as an example, you can get an i7K series or X series, the i7-6950X, and it comes with a massive 10 cores, 20 threads at a base clock of 3 GHz. And of course that can be overclocked and it's not unheard of to get up to 5 GHz. More likely you're probably going to get around about 4.7. If you need more cores, then you can go for an E5-2696 version 4, that includes 22 cores and 44 threads and if you times that by two by having a dual socket motherboard you're going to get 44 cores at a base clock of 2.2 gigahertz and if you had boost clock you'll get 3.7 now the next benefit is of course you can go for a server build if that's what you need a pc for or you can go for a gaming build x99 offers you that flexibility because the i7 and Xeon chips use the same socket type, they'll go into exactly the same motherboard, X99, and you can use them for both uh, purposes. Now, for gaming, you don't want to use a Xeon chip, and likewise, you don't want to use an i7 for a server platform or for a workstation. So, if you're savvy with computers and you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you could always swap in an i7 chip whenever you want to use it for gaming. And then when you want to use it as a workstation or server, you can swap out your i7 and put in your Xeon chips and that way you can then get the best of both worlds. So that gives you ability to get performance for both workstation and gaming workloads. Now in terms of performance, I'll just give you an example, the E2696, you're looking at a score of 12,416 on Cinebench R23 and that is accounting for only a single CPU. If you have it in a dual CPU configuration, that jumps up to 27,326. This score is only 6% slower than an i7-13700F, which is a brand new CPU that was released maybe about a year ago. However, the cost of an i7-13700F is considerably more and you'll be spending 76% more expensive than an E2696. You can get an E2696 for around about £88 compared to an i7-13700F which will cost you a total of £307. So with X99, you can get a high capacity RAM. Now, what I mean by that is actually the number of slots you can get on a motherboard. Generally, when you have a single slot X99 motherboard, you can sometimes find ones with eight RAM slots available for that one CPU, or you can get eight RAM slots for dual CPU configuration. Keep in mind, if you do have a dual socket configuration, one bank of slots will be allocated to one of the CPUs whereas the other bank would be for the other one. Keeping that in mind you can get fairly cheap DDR4 RAM which, which is what I did and I got eight sticks of four gigabyte DDR4 RAM and that gave me 32 gigabytes between two CPUs. Of course if you got eight gigabyte DIMMs you can get up to 64 gigabytes and 16 gigabyte DIMMs will get you up to 128. So coming out at number four, this platform is so cheap. You can get an E5-2643, which is six cores, at a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz. And they are going for as little as $20 each. So $40, you'll get two of those CPUs. You can run them in a nice dual socket configuration. Even if you decided to go for an i7-5960X, which is eight cores running at a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and can be overclocked to 4.7, you're looking around about $50. So putting that aside, you can get two Xeon chips or an i7 
CPU and that will give you a total cost of $90 for free CPUs. Whereas if you were to get an i3 12100F or an Ryzen 5 4600G for the same price of $90. And I guarantee you those CPUs will perform far better than those two CPUs that I just mentioned. And the final positive is it looks cool. I think they look cool. They look different, makes you stand out a little bit. Okay, if you get a generic Dell machine and you repurpose it, it's not going to look as good. And even some of the Chinese motherboards look a little bit off, a little bit janky. So yeah, it's a little bit of a mix. But if you mix it up with some cheap AIO coolers and you generally try and make it look a little better, then yeah, I mean, overall, I think they look freaking amazing. Now, if this content is helping you out to make the right decision or the wrong decision, whatever it is, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm only around about 760 subscribers as we speak. If you want to give me a super thanks, please do so. And also sign up to my Patreon below where I'll be selling some of the things that I've made in the past on my VHS hard drive and even my Sony Walkman. So keep an eye out for that and it gives you the opportunity to purchase those items. Thank you. So the first negative is of course high power consumption. These CPUs are not very efficient and they will be drawing watts out of your wall like there's no tomorrow. So it will probably put your electricity bill through the roof and leave you bankrupt in less than two weeks. Um, and I think with my system it's probably drawing around about 600 watts which is pretty high and I'm using a 1000 watt power supply so again you're going to need a pretty beefy power supply to be able to run everything smoothly in that system. So in my instance I was using E5 2643 with an RX 6700 XT and yeah the wattage is around about 600 watts so not cheap to run if you plan to keep this PC on. Next negative is yeah you're not going to be really running DDR5 at 7200 megahertz that's not going to happen you're going to be stuck at DDR4 2400 megahertz which by today's standard is incredibly slow most PCs running on DDR4 are running at 3200 megahertz and that's not supported by most of the CPUs out there if you go for Broadwell that mainly supports 2400 megahertz However, the majority of the Haswell CPUs will be supported a maximum of 2133 megahertz. So be careful when you're picking your CPUs on the x99 platform and try and go with Broadwell CPUs, which are still fairly cheap and you can get a slightly faster RAM supporting your CPU. The next negative is you can't use every x99 CPU on a dual socket configuration. If you're hoping to have a E5 1680 and you try and pair them together, they may or may not work together very well at all because that Xeon chip is not designed to work in a dual socket configuration. What you need to do is you need to get a Xeon chip that starts with a 2, which is exactly what I did, and that works perfectly in a dual socket configuration. So the CPU that I ended up getting was a 2643, Two of them work perfectly together, they'll talk to each other and, you know, they'll generally work pretty well. And last but not least, the final negative is it's far more complicated to put something like this together. You're going to get compatibility issues. Don't even get me started on some of the Dell or HP motherboards. You've got loads of weird quirks that go into those. If you buy a Chinese motherboard, good luck finding a user manual because they don't exist at all. So if you've got any jumpers and things like that that you need to set, it's kind of like a guessing game and just seeing what works, which is exactly what I did. So yeah, it's gonna be a nightmare. The other thing as well is you're gonna need to find a PSU or power supply that has dual CPU power connectors, which is rare, if not none, in today's world. So for me, I was really lucky. I got the motherboard for really cheap secondhand. I already had the power supply for whatever reason and it worked out pretty well for me but just bear in mind you're going to have a bit of a fight on your hands trying to build something like this let alone find a case that can fit everything in there nice and give you lots of space. So 
If this video has helped you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.